So in this episode, we realize now that the Grimm can transform their bodies and talk, or at least one of them. Hell no. Hi guys, my name is Maria Park, and this is Approach the Nerd. And in this episode, we are reviewing Ruby, Volume 8, Episode 2, entitled Refuge. This is a really good episode with a lot of on-crack stuff that happens. Um... We basically begin the episode looking at a prison that Crow, Robin, Jack, and Arthur Watts are in. And we thought that Arthur died last volume, but then again, we thought Clover died in the last volume too. So I guess that's really an indicator. But yes, Watts is alive. And um, Robin is very frustrated being in jail, not being able to do anything, feeling helpless. Um, Jack, of course, Weiss's dad is his own worst enemy, being an arrogant prick and talking about, you know, how he's probably going to be out of here soon. He has connections. He's not taking, like, accountability for anything. He even says something on the lines of, at least I don't murder people. I'm not a murderer, um, which is crazy. Um, you have Crow just silently kind of brooding over, I'm assuming it's Clover, (laughs) um, even though Clover's not dead, um... And then all of a sudden these guards come in and they hit Watts and they drag him off. And then you see, um, you know, Crow kind of has this look on his face and he makes a statement. Pretty much, there's no other way to translate this, that they need to do something, take action. Meaning they need to basically kill and take out Ironwood. Which is crazy as Ironwood is right now and has demonstrated last week. (laughs) Um, That's going to be an interesting fight. And I'm here for it. (laughs) Um, So moving on to Team Ruby, or at least a temporary new Team Ruby. Um, They're being led by May, who is a Happy Huntress member, um, to the Snee family. um, It's like their desk company called Snowshoe Shipping. And the plan is to use the pneumatic tubes to get to the military base in Atlas. Um, So while Weiss is explaining how it works, you know, she sits down on the tube leading to the military base and Nora just launches her. And everybody's face is kind of like, what the hell just happened? Um, And then Nora gets extremely excited because I guess she just really wants to do it. (laughs) So, but I guess it's really interesting because the way Weiss was sitting, like sitting at the base, it looked like her whole body closed in on itself and contorted and like shoved her through the tube. And I'm like, is she dead? <laughs> she should be. Um, I don't know. It, it's very, it's very interesting. But yeah, Nora, they should never let Nora around buttons. <laughs> I'm like around anything. She had too much fun doing that. Um, but yeah, so they're on the way to the military base in Atlas through the tubes. Now, my question is, why specifically said somebody needs to push the button? to launch the others. So then who gets left behind, I wonder? Unless they can program one of the robots to do it. I don't know. But yeah, so that's gonna be interesting to see who doesn't go. I probably should look at the trailer again to see who didn't, who doesn't go to Atlas, but somebody has to stay behind. So that's that's gonna be interesting. Um, We also got right prior to that, a sweet scene between Penny and Ruby where Penny is basically upset because she hates when friends fight. And Ruby's like, oh, yeah, well, me and Yang, may, we probably don't agree on this. And, really, uh, and she's like making excuses about her and Yang, even though they fought. They're still sisters. And Penny's like, no, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Winter and Ironwood. <laughs> like, I'm like, so now we see what's on Ruby's mind. Um, but then Penny goes along, you know, to say that she's so upset because she used to be the protector of Mantle. And now she's much more and she hates it. And, um, you know, if everyone dies, it's going to be her fault because Ironwood said that. And then Ruby's like, no, don't listen to him. Um, As a matter of fact, if you think about it, by you becoming the the Winter Maiden, you essentially did protect Mantle. And I think Penny kind of smiled at that. She is, Penny is so, like, burdened and sad. It's it's just, it makes me feel really bad for her character because Penny's such a sweet character. Um, So, yeah, they need to leave little Penny alone. Um, But meanwhile, Team Yang. So Team Yang, temporary Team Yang, (laughs) um, are aiding Joanna Greenleaf, who does this like hysterical takeover um, on the news, um, where she basically announces that they need to evacuate because the Grim are coming and, you know, they're happy to take everybody in. 
And so along with Fiona, their mission is to evacuate the citizens of Mantle and move them to the crater where they feel that they can protect it and they'll be safe and they can get all the supplies and raid all the, you know, different, you know, facilities for dust and things like that. Um, it becomes really difficult because while Yang and the others are basically getting the citizens to move, they don't really seem to want to go. As a matter of fact, they are putting on kind of airs like, we'd rather be on Atlas. Why do we have to go in the crater? And, you know, Yang's like, well, you know, they're willing to take you in. Atlas basically told you to F off, you know, even if you don't deserve to come to the crater with the rest of them. You know, I was like, wow. It's so, it's so divided, once again, like the U.S. is currently. So um, that actually was a very believable scene to me. Um, but also... A few other things that are going on. Ren is definitely missing Nora. He seems brooding and he's depressed. And I know, I think his powers, if I remember correctly, are based off of emotion or he's sensitive. He's very sensitive to others' emotions. So all the tension and negativity probably isn't helping. But both him and Nora had moments in this episode where they were kind of like broody and, you know, upset about not really being together and in, in, on the same team. So... That's interesting. Um, and then the second thing is Oscar has not told anyone that, that Ospin is back. And they have kind of like a conversation where Oscar said, you know, I'm not mad that you left. I'm mad basically that you came back because I was myself for a while. I got to figure out who I was and what I wanted and now you're back. And Ospin's like, I apologize. And now that, you know, we're sharing, you know, your body again, that means eventually our souls are going to merge. And it's like this un inevitable thing. And it's just, it's actually very sad. So um, Oscar's burdening a lot um, that I think is going to play out. Probably not at the end of this season, but then again, you never know. Um, and so outside of that, then we had what is the weirdest thing ever that happened in this video. So Yang and the others were kind of clearing up. I want to say it was the West sector because they were called to the East, but they never made it um, of Grimm. So they have reports of Grimm overriding areas and they were going to take the room out and they were doing really, really well, especially John. I was very proud of John. Um, but um, there is a bigger Grimm that comes and just snatches Oscar off of the back of Ren's bike and starts throwing him down and like, you know, zapping him and he like passes out. And then he proceeds to use Oscar's body as a human shield. And it kind of throws the team off because they've never seen a Grimm do that. They're not really that intelligent. So, you know, um, they're like kind of standing around and simultaneously this Grimm is also morphing its body. Like it's, it started off on all fours and then it started actually, you know, making itself where it can walk on two legs. And there is a part, and, and I do get this, when you see something that you have never seen before that's completely out of what you've known something to be, you've known these Grimm to be like wild animals with not a lot of intellect. To see one that's strategically thinking and planning, it's very freaky. And so you see, you know, John and you see Ren and you see Yang that are kind of like frozen. They have, their faces are shocked and they're just frozen. But there is a scene where like literally, um, the Grim is walking right past, like, like Yang is standing there and he's walking right past. I'm like, you totally could have got a side shot. He was open because he had Oscar on the other side. But I think she was so in shock that she couldn't do it. So the, basically the Grim uses that time to start morphing wings. But right before he does that, Ren actually yells at him to let Oscar go. And then you see him doing something like morphing his throat. And then he says, no. <laughs> and, all of, and all of them are like, did he just talk? And I'm like, oh, Lord, they're talking now. Um, <laughs> um, but he makes these wings. And then he um, basically flies off with Oscar. And you hear Yang talking to Fiona on the radio saying, you know, we can't make it to the east to help you guys because you wouldn't believe why. And they're just chasing Flying Grimm now, who was sent by Cinder to get Oscar you know, to try and get him back. Um, that's pretty much where the episode ends. I really, really enjoyed this episode, but gosh, that was crazy. Like that, like I will tell you when the Grimm came out, I wasn't expecting it. I haven't watched any spoilers or anything or watched any other reviews or watched any trailers. So um, I was like, why the hell is this Grimm morphing its body, shape-shifting like that? And why is it able to talk when no other Grimm in any other volume was able to do that? And so... 
it's interesting. So one of my friends told me that one of the theories about the Grimm's in general has always been that it is a, a pretty much a part of, of Cinder. I don't know if that's true. That would be interesting though, but I don't know if that's true, but it's very strange that the Cinder that she, I mean, that the, the Grimm that she sent to get Oscar had the, the ability to think, had the ability to be strategic and could morph its body and even speak. So I'm here for it. So now I'm really excited for episode three. Um, I like where it's going. Sometimes this stuff is a slow burn, but like these first two episodes have been very, like the cliffhangers have been pretty good. Um, like sleep being killed by Ironwood last week was what the hell. And now we got a talking and thinking and strategic grim this week that grabbed Oscar. So who knows what's going to happen next week? And that is why I'm excited. But I want to know what you guys think. So please leave me a comment below and let me know. And if you would like to sign up for jury duty, hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to know who's next on the nerd bell, hit the notification bell. Until next time, I can't wait for you to approach the nerd. Bye, guys. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it. But hey, the party doesn't have to stop now. Click on one of these videos and keep it going.